Hello and welcome to Money Talks with me, Alfred Joyner, and Ivy Times expert financial columnist, Edmund Shing. Hi, Edmund. Hi, Alfred. Now, today we're going to be talking about airlines, and you're not normally a fan of airline shares, are you? No, absolutely not. In the famous words of canny investor Warren Buffett, who is a billionaire, airlines have typically been an extremely good way to lose money over the long haul. So I don't mind flying in them, but generally I would avoid investing in them. And yet you would make an exception, in this case, with EasyJet. Yeah, because the budget airline business model is very different to what we call the flag carriers. Flag carriers would have been British Airways or Air France. And they typically have made money in the good times, but also lost a lot of money in the bad times because they've got all the aircraft and all the staff, very high cost. Budget airlines run on a very different principle. They're very focused and they're very flexible in terms of the number of aircraft they use, the number of staff they use. They can expand routes when things are going well. They can contract in the winter when demand goes down. So they're very, very focused. And the reasons for the budget airline's success, in particular EasyJet, are down to, to is it just the passenger numbers or are there other factors as well? Definitely other factors. I mean, passenger numbers are very important. And if you look at Ryanair or EasyJet, you can see that passenger numbers have been on the increase year over year as the, as I think the phenomenon of going away for weekends and going away for cheap holidays, particularly in Europe, has been on the rise. But EasyJet is different from Ryanair in the sense that they're also trying to target budget business travel. And from that point of view, they have slots, for instance, from London Gatwick and from, uh, and from Orly in Paris. So some mainline airports, because they're trying to get business customers who want to travel on the cheap. And also you mentioned in your article looking at passenger load, the load factor. What exactly is this? Right, the load factor is just a very simple way of saying how full is each aeroplane on average. And the answer is, in the case of EasyJet and in the case of Ryanair, the planes are even fuller this year than last year. To this extent that uh, in recent months, EasyJet aeroplanes have been on average 93% full. So very, very few spare seats. And I remember that when I came back from Geneva to Paris the other day on EasyJet, I was squashed in the middle, trust me, no aisle, no window seat. It was like whatever was left. And that tells you just how busy some of these flights with EasyJet are these days. Now, many a UK customer will be well aware of EasyJet and Ryanair. Are there any other budget airlines the investor can look out for? Well, there are two I'd like to mention. Wizz Air, which flies to and from Eastern Europe, areas such as Poland. And as you know, there's a lot of Polish people living in the UK now. They're on the upflying from Luton. So if you want to go to Eastern Europe, fly with Wizz Air from Luton. The other one, which is even more interesting, is Norwegian. Now, they obviously do a lot of budget flights to Scandinavia. But what's really interesting is that they're one of the cheapest ways today to fly from London to places like New York. They go from London Gatwick and they are dirt cheap compared to any other transatlantic airline. So, you know, if you're thinking about a weekend in, to New York and you want to fly to JFK, Norwegian's the way to go. Very well then. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Alfred. And for all our business news, go to our website, ibtimes.co.uk.